Well, I can't believe that for the millionth time in a row, a viral claim of racism has been exposed as a hoax with just the slightest touch of scrutiny applied. I'd say it's well past due that we learn our lessons, but at this point, it's clear that we don't want to, because this one is actually unique in that regard. It's not just that people believed it on the spot. It's not just that nobody waited for the evidence that never came out anyway. It's not just belief in the absence of substantiation. But in this case, that substantiation was actually manufactured by making an innocent man a sacrifice, or at least creating that public perception. By now you've likely heard, but last weekend there was a college women's volleyball tournament in Provo, Utah. BYU beat Duke in this particular match, but through her godmother on Twitter, the lone black Duke starting player Rachel Richardson claimed that she was repeatedly called the N-word every time she served by someone in the crowd. And she said she was threatened by a white male after the game. And all of this required ongoing police monitoring during the game itself. And that tweet went viral with hundreds of thousands of interactions. It was promoted as true by LeBron James, who has his own highly questionable history with claims of racial aggression. And before any demonstration of the story was ever delivered, it was already assumed to be true, in part because the usual media suspects told us that it was. Notice the reporting here. It's not that this slur heckling was claimed, it's that it happened definitively. A Division I volleyball match at Brigham Young University turned really ugly when black players from Duke University endured racial slurs from at least one fan in the crowd. Likewise for the New York Times, the Washington Post, NPR, the list goes on. All reporting this happened, not Duke player says, not Duke player claims. Instead, the story was this racist heckling is real, it's just a whodunit. Nobody knows how this N-word ninja has thus far managed to escape identification or detainment. So in fairness to the general public's lack of skepticism, I'm sure many were trusting that those in media whose job it is to scrutinize these stories had actually done that, though they clearly had not. But that doesn't excuse our own lack of skepticism entirely, because whenever you rely on someone else to do your thinking for you, even if they are really good at it, you're still sacrificing your ability to think for yourself. And just a little bit more of that would have exposed this story quickly, almost as fast as the viral retweets that spread it themselves. Because this story had holes from the start. It didn't take some special investigator's magnifying glass to see them, just a pedestrian commitment to asking for some evidence before automatically believing what you hear. First of all, this was a sold out crowd. Over 5,000 people in attendance in this arena. The entire event was live streamed on video from multiple angles, and yet there are no witnesses and no video of this happening. Was this a racist ghost communicating telepathically? Also notable that the people making the original claim, Richardson's godmother and her father, weren't even at the event. Richardson's godmother, the author of the original viral tweet, was tweeting from Texas. Her father was watching the game at home on the East Coast, so he not only saw nothing in person, but he admits he saw nothing of the sort on TV either. We were watching the match at our home here in uh, Maryland, and uh, you know, during the game had no clue what was going on. And not only were these people pushing the story not there and witnessed nothing, the woman behind the original tweet is a politically insane person running for political office. And you hardly had to look beyond the first tweet to see that. It says right there in her account name that she's running for a judgeship in Dallas. In the photo she shared, Rachel Richardson is wearing a Black Lives Matter Duke t-shirt. And the people who bothered browsing some of her other tweets noticed that when she's not pushing race hoaxes, this woman enjoys posting her hatred for white people or white people, as she unaffectionately calls them. She's since privatized her Twitter account, perhaps because of all the unwelcome white eyes now viewing it, but we're just supposed to ignore how this story perfectly suits the political needs of a career race baiter in search of a campaign boost. Plus, there were inconsistencies in the original story. First, the story was that there was one guy doing the heckling. That's what Duke players said after the game. Then Richardson's dad insisted with media later that there were many racist hecklers, none of whom he actually saw or heard himself. Godmom says the chants grew louder and louder despite the deployment of a police officer to monitor. Was this officer in on the chants? If the chants got more and more obvious, how was the cop unable to identify the person? And all of these points are minor, 
compared to the broad premises that you had to buy to believe this story as told, it all just defies common sense to believe that a person would be openly screaming the N-word and nobody intervenes or even bothers to record it. So it's not just him who's racist. It's everyone in the arena who's implicitly racist by tolerating this, including the mostly black BYU men's basketball team, who was seated right there in the student section where all of this was supposedly happening and either impossibly did not hear this louder and louder hateful voice that was getting from their seats onto the court clearly somehow, or they did hear it and in no way felt compelled to kick the ass of the person responsible or even react negatively in any way. They attended the whole game laughing on their way out. We'd have to believe that nearly everyone in that arena was somehow in on this racial heckling plot and apparently the cover-up afterward too, when in fact nobody was, as demonstrated by the repeated groveling in response since. Before any of the facts were available, BYU Athletics put out a statement expressing extreme disheartenedness at the actions of a small number of fans, which I guess is technically correct because the number was small. It was zero, not according to my speculation, but according to their second statement in which BYU Athletics says they were not able to identify a perpetrator of any racial slurs. Doesn't matter though. After that, the most embarrassingly named athletic director of all time had to embarrass himself even further with a spectacle of a statement before the next game on Saturday in which he prematurely blamed his own school's students and fans for a totally unproven claim. For those who don't know me, my name is Tom Homo. I'm the athletic director at BYU. At last night's game, there were some egregious and hurtful slurs. Do not cross the line where you would hurt or harm anyone in any way. For the record, that's Tom Holmo, H-O-L-M-O-E. And of course, he was ripped for not groveling enough, which is totally unfair, not just because there were no facts for which to apologize, but because if anybody knows exactly what it's like to be aggressively teased, I'm sure Tom Holmo grew up learning a thing or two about it. And of course, the five seconds of investigation since has now revealed what even a casually critical mind suspected on site. This did not happen. BYU police have reviewed all available footage. There is no evidence of even a single slur uttered, let alone repetitively as claimed. And they've been unable to identify even one witness who will say that there was. But what separates this story from the million others that came before it is in this case, someone was punished as though he was responsible for it very publicly, apparently as a sacrifice to appease the mob. That first BYU statement says that someone was banned from future games. In fact, from all BYU athletic venues indefinitely, NPR reports, for the reason that BYU loves and respects all God's children and is committed to abandoning attitudes of prejudice and rooting out racism, strongly implying this was the person responsible for the slur shouting. But what's strange is that second statement confirms they were never able to identify who shouted the slur. Well, if they couldn't identify this N-word ninja then, and after investigation they still can't now, then who did they ban? Did they just send a lamb to slaughter? It appears, yes. That police investigation confirms the man they banned never uttered a slur. He's on video the whole time. There's no instance of him yelling the N-word. In fact, he wasn't even present when Richardson was serving as originally alleged, though he does admit he was yelling during the game that Duke players shouldn't hit the ball into the net. He's a student from a nearby college. By his own admission and review of the evidence, he's guilty of general sports taunting. After the game, the mere accusation from Duke players that he's the guy was enough to get him banned, despite no evidence to support that accusation. And it's not an inference based on those facts to say that he was made a sacrifice to appease the mob and quell the PR mess. There's an inside source now confirming that, an anonymous one from within the BYU athletic department telling a school newspaper doing far better reporting than any major media who didn't even bother asking any of these questions that Richardson's story just doesn't add up. And BYU has banned an innocent man to appease the mob and make their PR mess go away. It's not about his guilt or innocence. It's just about the need to support the story as told. If the facts don't do that, we'll make them do that. Which is what makes this story as a supposed episode of racism 
so laughable, at least as presented as white against black racism. It is a story of racism, but in the opposite way, it's only a story of racism because it maintains as an unbreakable premise that a black person is not capable of wrongdoing. If this was actually a case of white against black racism, and that was actually a broad feature of society, this complaint of a slur would have been laughed at and mocked with additional slurs. Instead, the mere accusation alone is enough for everyone accused to bend the knee and all but slit their own throats on command. This story has developed this way because of constant preference for a black person, not constant rejection, every piece of it from the total lack of scrutiny to the groveling series of apologies to the current reporting that still insists, even in the face of no evidence, that the real N-word ninja must still be at large, all of that is built on the premise that it's just not possible for a black person to lie. That by virtue of this girl's skin color, she is incapable of any negative qualities. So even when basic reason and the observable facts show us she is clearly not telling the truth, well, that just means we have to adjust the truth to fit what she says. That is not a demonstration of oppression. That is a demonstration of power. And this girl and her family almost certainly knew that when they exercised it. She knows that she has the power to say whatever she wants, have it be automatically believed to become a hero, and importantly in this context, to punish the opposing team for kicking her ass in this game and the opposing home fans for likely enthusiastically enjoying that. This story is nothing more than uncritically empowered poor sportsmanship. This is a story of a sore loser who played badly and couldn't handle it, so she's reversing her fortune by exploiting the sympathies of a society she calls racist, but actually eagerly kisses her ass based on nothing but her race alone. And if that's racism, the ability to lose and to lie and to smear and still be celebrated for all of your non-accomplishments, well, we should all be so lucky to achieve it. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Parlor. that is at M L. Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.